I still remember the first time Valerie mentioned it. She looked at me with those piercing eyes, a playful yet commanding glint in them, and said, Mark, I think it's time for you to become my sissy girl. At first, I thought she was joking. But as the days went by, she kept bringing it up, teasingly but with an undeniable seriousness. It was a Saturday when she finally decided it was time. She had laid out the uniform on our bed, layers of black latex, ballet heels, and a mask that would completely enclose my head. This is your new uniform, sissy, she announced with a tone that brooked no argument. Sealed up in layers of latex, ballet heels locked on, and a mask tightly enclosing your head. Every day, sissy, this is your working uniform. Valerie was always very persuasive, and I found myself complying, albeit nervously. The latex felt strange and constricting as she helped me slide into it. The ballet heels forced my feet into an unnatural arch, making balance a challenge. And the mask, it was the mask that truly transformed me. As she slipped it over my head, I felt my identity being stripped away, replaced by the feminine doll-like appearance it imposed. She stood back to admire her handiwork, her eyes filled with satisfaction. I'll let you out once in a while to clean you, but you will go right back in when I'm done, she said, running a gloved hand over the latex covering my arm. You are my latex made for life, sissy. No escape, no freedom, never. Just latex enclosure and cleaning. I could barely see through the small eye openings in the mask, but I could make out her figure moving to the cart where several wigs were displayed. She chose one, a sleek black wig, and placed it on my head, adjusting it until it looked just right. Perfect, she purred, stepping back to admire me once more. My perfect little latex sissy girl. Every day since then has followed a strict routine. Valerie wakes me up early, helping me into my latex uniform if I hadn't slept in it, and ensures my mask is secured tightly. The ballet heels never come off, and every movement is a reminder of my new role. Cleaning, cooking, and serving her needs have become my daily tasks, all while encased in the tight, glossy latex that has become my second skin. Valerie is both my captor and caretaker. She makes sure I'm always immaculate, often cleaning and polishing the latex herself, but never allowing me to forget my place. You belong to me, sissy, she whispers as she locks me back into my uniform after a cleaning session. And I will never let you go. The transformation wasn't just physical. It changed something deep within me. There was a strange comfort in the routine, in the way Valerie took control. I began to crave the feel of the latex, the restriction, and even the loss of my former identity. I had become her sissy girl, and as much as I resisted at first, a part of me grew to accept, even embrace, this new existence. And so, every day, I live as Valerie's latex-clad sissy maid, finding a peculiar solace in the confinement and the unwavering structure she provides. Valerie's domination over me extended beyond the confines of our home. She wanted to show me off, to present her perfectly crafted sissy girl to the world. Our first shopping trip together marked a significant step in this direction. Today, sissy, we're going shopping, she announced one morning as she helped me into my latex uniform. The prospect filled me with a mix of excitement and anxiety. Valerie had put me on a strict diet to maintain a delicate, feminine figure and added padding to enhance my curves. The mask she provided was so realistic that it completely transformed my face, giving me the appearance of a beautiful, albeit artificial, woman. As we walked through the bustling mall, Valerie kept a firm grip on my arm, proudly leading her sissy girl through the crowd. I could feel the eyes on me, people admiring my glossy black latex outfit and perfectly styled wig. The mask, with its delicate features, only added to the illusion. No one would have guessed that beneath all the latex and padding, I was anything but a girl. In the stores, Valerie took her time selecting outfits, lingerie, and accessories for me. She enjoyed making a spectacle of it, having me try on various pieces while she and the store clerks evaluated each look. What do you think, sissy? She would ask, though my opinion mattered little in the end. Her pleasure came from the control she exercised over me, and the reactions of those around us. Isn't she lovely? Valerie would ask the salespeople, who would nod enthusiastically, none the wiser to my true identity. I felt a strange mix of humiliation and pride, knowing that I was successfully fulfilling the role Valerie had crafted for me. Back home, Valerie often invited her friends over, both male and female. 
These gatherings were another opportunity for her to showcase her sissy maid. Everyone, this is my sissy girl, she would introduce me, her voice dripping with satisfaction. Isn't she perfect? As their sissy maid, I served them drinks, snacks, and anything else they desired. They treated me like an object, a novelty to be admired and teased. Look at how well behaved she is, one of Valerie's male friends would say, pinching my latex clad waist. Valerie has trained her so well. The women were no kinder, often making me do little spins to show off my figure or commenting on how pretty I looked. It's hard to believe she's not a real girl, one would say, inspecting my mask and wig closely. Valerie, you've done an incredible job. The teasing was relentless, but I had learned to accept it, even finding a strange satisfaction in the humiliation. It was all part of the role Valerie had created for me. At night, when everyone had left, she would hold me close, whispering in my ear how proud she was of her sissy girl. You've done so well, sissy, she would murmur, her hands running over the smooth latex that encased me. You make me so happy. Despite the constant teasing and the loss of my former identity, there was a part of me that had grown to crave Valerie's approval, to feel her pride in the transformation she had orchestrated. I had become her sissy girl, her latex-clad doll, and in this new, strange existence, I found a twisted sense of fulfillment. Each day, I continued to live as Valerie's sissy maid, a delicate figure molded to her desires, paraded before her friends, and cherished as her perfect creation. And in that role, I found a peculiar peace, knowing that I was exactly where she wanted me to be.